Hello world, I'm Maya Sundermeyer and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far, I have been able to share my own experiences on what it's like for me to live with and face autism on a daily basis. Other times I will give my two cents on what's going on with autism in the media. And a third thing that I like to do is um, provide an autism resource for those of you who are on the autism spectrum and to your families and your peers and your mentors and your special and gener general education teachers and to anybody that's in the community in general, such as current or potential employers and so on and so forth. And finally, I like to cover topics that I'm passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with autism whatsoever. And in this video blog, what I'm going to do is share my experiences with you on a story of how I became who I am today. So I had recently posted a blog right here on YouTube about being really, really careful about as to who you tell or raise your autism awareness to because there are people out there that will pounce and they can take advantage of you as soon as they find out that you've got a label. But in this one, I'm going to do a little neat story and it has a really, really happy ending, almost like a Cinderella as a matter of fact. So uh, this was in May of 2003. I had received a phone call from a lady that was looking for a housekeeper and I would have gotten free room and board. And it turned out that she was a realtor and she also um, ran an adult foster care program for adults. And I decided to tell her that, oh, yeah, I'm autistic, and I've been living on my own, and I'm high-functioning. And I expected that she would be willing to teach me how to mow the lawn, and she'd be somebody who would be a lot more patient, and somebody that would accept me for who I was, and it would be a really, really good fit in a community. Well, I went on the interview later that evening, and it was the entire time that she kept hinting at, oh, you've got a disability, you get these free services, and I was crying about it. And she, tr she tried to comfort me, and of course it was negative. It was like, well, yeah, well my other client's a ballerina, or, or not, my other client has a sister who's a ballerina, while my client has a brace, and that's just the way it is. And it was just, it was really embarrassing. And it was not only that, she decided that she wanted to take me in as a client if I qualified for adult foster care, and she wanted me to get on Social Security. And it was at that same time that my aunt was coming up, uh, maybe a few days later, and she wanted to know what was going on with my life. And it turns out that she wanted to see how I was doing. So... She gave me a call one day, and I told her where I was going to go, and she was a little concerned, so she said, hmm, let me have that number of that lady. So I gave her the number of the provider and the uh, person who was looking for a housekeeper, and my aunt had called her, and it turned out that she didn't care about me at all. She was only interested in me if I qualified for adult foster care. So... Uh, long story short, I turned out, or it turned out that if I moved there, um, I would go on medication and that I would not be allowed to find a job because uh, she was trying to get me onto Social Security. So, um, my aunt was just not real thrilled with that because she was scared that I would either end up on the streets or I would get screwed by this lady. So, I had been wanting to move to Atlanta anyway. And I had also been looking at the dream and the possibility to get into Georgia State University, even though I wasn't college ready at the time. So uh, she came up to visit and she started measuring uh, the things in my room and seeing uh, what stuff could fit where. And I said, yeah, I'm going to take that all with me if I get into that group home. And my aunt said, I'm not real sure if that's the best fit for you. And I said, what do you mean? And it was at that moment that she asked me if I wanted to come down here to Atlanta. And I remember that was one of the most happy moments of my life. And it was like, just like that, I was off the hook. I didn't have to live in a group home where I was going to be taken advantage of the rest of my life and 
treated like a guinea pig and somebody keeping me down. So if I hadn't made that move to say that move, I either would have ended up on the streets or I would have most likely have been in the group home setting. Now, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. How many of you have dealt with uh, similar situations where somebody wanted to put you into a group home because they uh, found out you had a label and they looked at that label rather than you as a person? And how many of you were able to bail on the situation and find something better? Uh, I would love to hear from you. Uh, until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer.